Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri. Today we're gonna to discuss a bad modeling practice which I see consistently and kind of how this came about. So this doesn't happen often, but one of my favorite, absolute favorite things to do in life is when I get together with some of my, I don't know, colleagues, other professionals, and it sits down and we're just having coffee, for example. So you have your coffee mug and you're sitting at a Starbucks or you're sitting at like a desk somewhere in an office space and it's quiet and there's no one around. And you have these deep conversations about the industry and they're honest, they're brutally honest and we feel like there's no one more or less censoring us in our jobs. There's no issue with like management being upset about what we're talking about. And so actually one of these happened probably about a week ago here. I met with a few friends. Uh, they were consultants that worked on a few projects with a bank I used to work with. Uh, but we had this just natural conversation and they started to ask me, one of the guys was like, hey, you know, Dimitri, how do you like your job at X, Y, and Z? Uh, you know, you've been in these different banks in the last few years. Um, you've worked in these different areas. Why don't you tell me about what you're working on, how you're doing? And so like, we're just casually like friends chatting about it. And so the conversation came up, I was working in a specific area of risk and they asked, you know, oh, do you mind if we ask what type of models um, were you using? And so I look at them and I kind of cringe. I say, well, basically we're only using this one model. And they say, okay, that's great, right? So you're using that one model. Have you guys considered anything else? And I said, well, I've looked at using these other three different models. I think they're great methods, you know, but you have this problem in banking where you have a bank and the bank only likes to use one model. And I don't know if you guys have seen this, but this is the problem I'm always having. I've been, you know, this bank, this bank, and this bank, I've been a consultant. Uh, I've worked through a lot of different issues. I've talked to people. And yet we all seem to use like just the one model at the one bank. And as soon as you go to a different bank, it changes. They all use a different model. And so the people I'm with kind of looking at me, they're kind of laughing and we're, they're like, yeah, Dimitri, we're consultants. We see this all the time. Um, you know, at this bank, for example, they only use this one model. They just force the model to use it over and over and over. And they said, you know, at this bank that you worked at, right, what was the big model? And so I list off the name of the model and they all get kind of a kick out and we all laugh. But the thing is, we kind of got into this deep theoretical conversation of, you know, there's not a lot of good quality talent in the model development realm or even in banking in general. Um, we didn't really address why this is happening. But we did make this general kind of conclusion that there's not a lot of people that go back to the fundamentals of modeling within itself. And so this kind of let off topic from that like everybody uses the one type of model they're comfortable with and then everybody does like these BS nonsense kind of like variable selection processes and how basically there's just not a lot of people that are really thinking deeply about this model development process. And I think in my opinion, so now I'm taking you out of the storyline here and out of this great coffee meeting I had, it's not necessarily the bank's fault that we have this. I just think that banks more or less are pushing for efficiency. So they need a model, they need it quickly, and they need people to do this. And so they run out there and you have a bunch of people in banking who have business degrees and they understand business very well and they're great at it. And so that's fine, but they don't know anything about model development. So they go out and they hire these model developers, right? And so what ends up happening is you hire model developers, which you think are good and you have to come up with some criteria. So for example, I think the most common criteria is, do you have experience? Because we don't like to hire you know, fresh grads, which I don't know why it's a big fear in the industry. I think it's detrimental to the industry as a whole. But anyways, they go out there and they hire these people that have, oh, this guy's got 10, 15 years experience in risk management. He's gonna be great and amazing. He's gonna change the way we do this modeling. We're gonna bring him in. He's gonna build these models. We're gonna pass, for example, C current DFAS regulations or we're gonna have great models, we're gonna be able to use them, we're gonna pass you know, these other regulations, we're gonna be able to appease uh, senior management. And so we hire them, we bring them in, and they do these models. And then we run into these problems we were discussing, like they're not really statisticians. And I think the thing to put kind of a point on is they're not quants. 
They have a generic stats degree, a generic PhD in econometrics, some just generic understanding. They put in the grind, uh, they got their undergrad and their PhD or undergrad masters and PhD, but they don't really quite love what they're doing. And so they don't think these things through and they don't understand them very well. And I would love to say that there's an easy way to select great talent. Like, oh, if you select the top name universities for statistics and econometrics, you end up with great quality talent. That's not necessarily true. I've seen people from top rated, um, even students that have been trained from more or less legends kind of in the industry of statistics or in the industry of econometrics. And yet I see them and they just don't model very well. And then the problem is, is that when you end up starting this practice, right, the people that ended up doing the original hire are business people and I don't blame them at all but they didn't really understand quants or modelers or developers. And so they bring in these developers that have all this experience, which I think years of experience, in my opinion, is just nonsense. I've seen guys with six months experience in industry, 10 times brighter than a guy with 30 years who's getting ready to retire who's a developer. Uh, they'll blow them out of the water. Uh, I don't think experience is necessarily something you measure in years of sitting at a desk. It's years of success actually creating value for a bank or for an institution. But anyways, it's hard to select these great people. And so what happens, you have this guy that's not very good at his job. And so then they hire more people that are kind of like them. And then it's kind of up in this trickle effect that no one's paying attention. And then you bring in consultants, for example, that are very, very good or very bad. I'm not a big fan of consultants in general, but you end up with really good ones, for example, and they come in, or you have a new employee you hire, and they come in and they say, hey, did you check these assumptions? Um, why aren't you guys using these other methods? Uh, there's all these new advances, for example, in machine learning. Why can't we apply these to the scenario? And then the banks kind of cringe, and then they kind of like shuffle you off to the side, and they're like, hey, hey, we're kind of doing business here, right? We don't need you to rock the boat. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. And yet, in part of this coffee discussion was is, why do people build models and they select the model they're going to build before they even look at the data? And so I'm gonna put a link up top somewhere, it'll be a little tab that pops out, or even below I'll put a description. But the thing is is that I have a video on this whole model development process. I'm still in the process of making all of the videos. But one of those is model selection. Model selection isn't at the beginning, you have to do all the data cleaning, the data processing. You have to look at your data, figure out what problem you're trying to solve and what you're modeling. And then once you get to that point, you select a model structure based off the data and the characteristics in the data and the variables that you would like to use to model that dependent target variable. And yeah, it's just so frustrating in a banking setting. I just feel like banking is falling behind the curve. Um, there's a lot of tech people and a lot of people now running with the machine learning and they're going out to outer space with this stuff and they're like off the walls, not having the experience, but just excited to apply things wherever. I think that's very dangerous on one end. And then I feel like we have the traditional brick and mortar banks that are kind of stuck in their ways. And yet you have quants, which I'd like to define is more as this process of continual learning some of the advanced skills in mathematics, statistics, and computer science. Again, it's this endless process. But the issue is, is when you have these quants that deeply think about these problems, right? This isn't like a routine day for them. Like they mentally drive down and figure out solutions to problems, which should save you money in the long run because you only have to develop a model every so often. Instead, when you have cheap, crappy models, you have to redevelop them really, really quickly. And so then you need twice as many people to develop twice as many models because you didn't think about the problem. And so anyways, just kind of to wrap this video up is this is kind of the discussions I wish the risk and quant industry and it would have in general is that it's so hard to sit people down and have this honest discussion like, I saw the worst practices ever at this bank, or I saw the worst practices ever this one date, right? You, there's banks that have great astounding models, and don't get me wrong, a lot of the banks have really good solid models, but from time to time you just see garbage coming in, and it's just so hard to sit there and not say anything, and I really wish there was more of this discussion 
between the quant community on putting more emphasis on hiring better talent, um, on encouraging people to learn more and to become better qualified for their jobs. Uh, just because you graduated college with a great degree doesn't mean you're bright. You have to keep learning because the world's ever changing. But having this discussion with some of my closest friends and colleagues and just people I meet and just being able to have this honest and real discussions, bringing up a lot of the key issues with banking, which leads kind of to one of the issues on this channel, which is realizing a lot of my honest and true opinions I can't bluntly state because I'm walking this line between the professional world of my job and being paid and doing what I need to do and this other realm of I would like to expose a lot of the issues in the industry but it's kind of that don't bite the hand that feeds you argument here that I can't necessarily go all the way against the banks and drive in and change things without upsetting the industry and potentially current employers, past employers. Uh, it could burn bridges in here. But again, I really just wish on these forums in the comments below that people would discuss more of the issues and bring up topics and have honest questions and feedback. There shouldn't be this pressure as there is in risk management and quantitative finance that you can't ask a question because you'll look stupid because you don't know it. Right? I've sat in many meetings and asked questions and I'm sure people have looked at me like, wow, this guy is dumb. But at the end of the day, I learned a lot from these and I've grown a lot as I've gone through the industry. And so I'm hoping that more people will actually start commenting and having conversations in both my LinkedIn uh, kind of articles and views and chat forums. I'd really encourage people to join here on YouTube. If you wanna be featured on a video, I've been trying to like organize a few different features and videos. So if you want to actually be featured in a video, a video I will be making is on advice for graduate students. So those that are getting masters and PhDs in quantitative fields. If you've already gone through it and you have a job, what is your advice to those current students on internships, on graduate student life, like just anything basic and simple. I would love for you to actually come and give me some content. Um, if you want to do an interview, I've been trying to get industry professionals to sit down with me and chat and have an interview. And again, we're gonna walk that line. We're not gonna blow you out of the water and try to make anything really look ridiculous. Um, I understand that it's nice to be kind of unknown and behind the scenes, but I feel like a lot of people aren't stepping up to the plate and helping make these banks, these industries, this risk management a better field because everybody's afraid to say something. So I've kind of gone off tangent here, but this is just a video I've been wanting to make with a few different topics kind of weaved in. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.